So I read in the news that the South African government is claiming that the national health insurance bill has to be passed because the majority of people in South Africa want this bill to be passed. There's two things I believe that we ought to say about this. The one is that this seems to be the continual problem with these type of destructive legislational ideas is that during the public consultation processes, it's always uh, inundated with, with procedural irregularities enough to allow organizations such as AfriForum and Solidarity to take the matter to court and to have it overthrown on procedural grounds. Uh, but also in terms of the public consultation processes, every time we find the same thing, which is that the majority of people who participate in these processes state very clearly that they do not approve of this legislation, that this would be destructive, and they point out all the reasons why this is not a good idea. And then the South African government goes uh, on to announce that the majority of people actually do want this. And they can only do this by discarding or disregarding the, the vast majority of the inputs that was provided during the public consultation process. We saw this with, uh, with the uh, uh, notion or the proposal to change the constitution to empower the state to expropriate private property without compensation, where the public was overwhelmingly against the idea. And the government just declared that, and the ruling party in particular, that the majority actually wants this. Uh, we had, we've had many such examples, also with the changing of Pretoria's name to Chani, with which they didn't uh, succeed, uh, as well as with, uh, just as with the uh, expropriation bill, uh, where they just declared that the majority of people, majority of people uh, want this to happen, when in fact the majority of people who participate in the process do not want this to happen. And the reason why they claim that the majority of the people want this to happen is because they believe that Whatever the ANC as the ruling party says is the view of the majority of the people because the ANC is the party with the majority of the votes. So there's a very clear discrepancy here between what the ruling party claims and what the people actually claims. And then the ruling party claims that whatever they say is the view of the majority. And if there is a public consultation process uh, which differs from them, of which the outcome differs from them, uh, they simply disregard that. So that's one point. The other point is about the challenge to democracy or this being an example of what we might call very frankly the failure of, of democracy uh, in South Africa. If we were to accept for the sake of the argument that the majority actually wants this bill, this national health insurance bill, or uh, expropriation of private property without compensation, uh, to use the same argument. If we were to accept that, that does not mean that that ought to happen, or that does not mean that the outcome of such a legislational or constitutional change would be a good thing. And this is the problem with thinking about democracy as, as long as the process is correct, the outcome will always be correct. In other words, as long as we follow the correct process and we lead to a, which leads to a point where the majority of people agree on something, then that has to be the correct decision. This is not how it works because we have seen, especially we've seen this in history over and over again, and especially in South Africa, that the majority of the people can be wrong. The majority of the people can want something that is to their own disadvantage. And we should not blame them too much for this. Because studies have been done on this uh, about the, the link between democracy, representative democracy or modern liberal democracy as we know it today, and quality of government. And the question was asked, does democracy actually lead to quality of government? If, can we assume that if a decision is a democratic decision, the outcome would be a good outcome? And the answer, at least to, to these studies, is that it doesn't. There's not a proper link between democracy and quality of government. There is, in certain circumstances, uh, democracy does lead to quality of outcome in countries that are already fairly wealthy, in countries where voters are already fairly well educated, uh, already involved with the economy, and in countries that are fairly homogeneous, that's fairly dominated uh, or inhabited by one particular culture with one language and one 
broad broad view on how society and how uh, the government and the laws that sprout from government ought to be structured. But these same studies have also found that in countries where there is a variety of cultural groupings and views, and especially in countries that are poor, where the majority of the people or a significant amount of the people are poor, are unemployed, uh, and so forth. In these countries, democracies, democracy tends to lead to the opposite. Democracy tends to lead to low quality of government. And we should not necessarily blame the people for that because there's a good explanation for this, which is that in a country where the majority of people or a significant amount of the people are poor, we should not blame them if they vote for a party that promises to give them certain things. In other words, to provide short-term alleviation of their situation. Because democracy at its core is a supply and demand system. So you need to have a supply of a particular form of government uh, from a political party that offers certain policy ideas and you need to have a demand for certain policy ideas. But in a country that is overwhelmingly poor, with high unemployment rates and so forth, what we often find is a demand for uh, economic policies that provide short-term alleviation but that is destructive in the long run. And then on the other side of that coin, you find political parties who are very keen to, to fulfill that role, to, to offer that to people, to say to the people, vote for us and we will give you money, for example. We will give you more social grants and, and so forth. So this is not to say that uh, democracy per se is the problem. This is to say that the way in which democracy in South Africa, at least, is being implemented or approached is a problem that there is or should be or ought to be an important difference between democracy and majoritarianism. But in the South African context, these two things are regarded as the same things. That it is particularly dangerous to hide something under the banner of democracy when you have a society that is composed of different cultural groupings where in fact those, the, the party who was able to, to uh, garner most support is able to enforce its views on other groups that have a different view of how a society ought to be structured. This is not democracy. This is majoritarianism. A democracy where a community, a democracy is and ought to be a system where a community gets together to decide who their leaders are and for people to have a particular link and affiliation with their leaders. But in a country like South Africa that is exceptionally big and exceptionally diverse, uh, to have this type of system leads to the type of outcomes that we see in South Africa today. And this is why it is so important to underline and to emphasize that the problems that we experience in South Africa today does not merely or should not merely be linked to whoever is the president of the country. It should not merely be linked to who, whichever party has received the most votes. We ought to recognize that there is a structural underlying problem with the way in which the political system in South Africa is put together.